It is Thursday, April 21st, 2016. This is Room in the Trees, a podcast about creative depression and pain. No joke there, man. It's a podcast about living life as a creative person, good and bad. Not gonna lie, things get a little heavy today, but hang in there, it's worth it. The following episode was recorded on March 24th, 2016. This is episode number two, The Disabler. Room in the Trees is hosted by Sabrina Ward-Harrison and me, Trent Reynolds. The podcast is made possible by you. If you like what you hear, please consider showing your support by becoming our patron at patreon.com backslash room. Some big love going out to Elizabeth Needham this week. She is our very first patron on patreon.com. Elizabeth, I don't know you, but I am sending all sorts of warmth and gratitude your way today. Sabrina tells me you are a wonderful person, and I believe it. Thanks for being the first, and thanks for supporting Room in the Trees. Consider yourself in the room. You've made it. We're still figuring out the right format for our conversations. Uh, For now, the general idea is that one of us will choose a thought, quote, subject, or something to get a conversation started. And then we talk about it for a while. The website is another important part of Room in the Trees. Go to roominthetrees.com to see show notes, pictures, videos, and other stuff related to each episode. You can also leave us brief feedback at the website. And now, we begin. I chose our prompt for today. And it comes from a book that I love and that is widely read in art programs everywhere. Uh, The book is called Art and Fear, uh, which was written by David Bayliss and Ted Orland. And this is not their quote, but it's a quote that they use in their book. Uh, The quote is from... Stephen Disabler. Disabler. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, <laughs> so disabler. <laughs> dis- <Sorry>. What? <clears throat> it's an awkward last name. Like, it sounds like Disabler. Like uh, it is. Disabler. Disabler. Like or, it, like, he's destabling something. Like, something stable. And, yeah. Like, anyway. Uh, Stephen Disabler. Like disa- like, disabling yeah <laughs> okay. go, go ahead Sorry. Oh, i think we could just keep on going on Steve's disable thing. like it's just like <laughs> it's like disable yes yeah yeah disable okay. or disable we'll invite him to the podcast next yeah okay. yeah uh Stephen, reach out if uh, okay. if you hear this uh the quote is <laughs> artists don't get down to work until the pain of working is exceeded by the pain of not working. I'm going to read that one more time. Artists don't get down to work until the pain of working is exceeded by the pain of not working. Have you ever read the book The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, another notorious Stephen? I have not, but you have referenced him in previous conversations about art yes and i probably will annoyingly refer to that book many times it's a it's a tiny book but i i really it really resonated with me but he talks a lot about your work you know he talks a lot about be, becoming a pro and you know a pro puts in time he d- does his work every day you know shows up um and that's what this uh when i read this quote artists don't get down to work so what is what is an artist's work? What's your work? How would you define that? What is your work? Well, I found this a really interesting uh, quote to reflect on because, again, I thought, well, what's the definition of work? Because I think for an artist, one wrestles with, there's so much cerebral work that goes on. There's so much reflection and observation. Mm-hmm. Um, 
<clears throat> and that can become a very self-conscious bit um, conflicting thing with the modern day work mo you know what mean what means you're actually working like you could just make a bunch of crap all day mm -hmm. and that could be working but giving yourself um, a little peace of mind to reflect and oh it's a it's a really it's a comp complicated thing because if you're not working sometimes working means stepping outside and observing the world and and being really present mm. Well, I think I think there are a lot lots of different facets to an art practice. You know, it, ways to keep mm -hmm. yourself from getting blocked, or ways to keep yourself moving and making stuff. And some of that, obviously, is like to get out and not, um, you know, isolate yourself or pursue self destructive type things. But I think um, I don't know, and I think you're right that that they're part of the work of of making of being an artist is cerebral is giving yourself the time and space and creating an environment where you can think about it right to consider it and be uh, be in tune with it rather than having it just be in the back of your mind or, or a, a secondary thing it needs it needs your full intent attention engagement so that to do the best work yeah the, it also like to make your time we've talked about this before about making work just to sort of sometimes you're you know sometimes a bit of pre pre work work you know where you get yourself set up and grounded and mm -hmm. zoned in with what you why you're what why you're making the work you're making um right but I think there's, and this is part of the War of Art book as well, it, it, there is this sense that, you know, that you need to feel inspired to be able to work. And that, I don't think that's the case. I do think there is, I think you need to, to put in the time, like to just, even if yeah. you don't feel it, even if you don't feel inspired, even if you, you know, hate it, you've got to be willing to just put in the, put in the hours. So... I don't know. There's, I think, the multiple facets, exactly. multiple, multiple ways to think about it. Um, this this particular quote resonated with me uh, just at the place that I'm at in my life um, because about two months ago, I, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it's been a lot longer than that. I can't remember. But the time passed by, uh, passes by so fast. Um, but there was a time when I just was very unhappy and I hadn't had not uh, made my own work in a long time the only work that I was making at that time were were paintings done in art classes as demonstrations that I didn't care about you know there were projects or whatever just uh -huh. fast paintings to show people how to paint and it wasn't my work um, so one day I decided that I was just going to give myself permission to give you know to use the whole day just to take it and not worry about making money, not worry about what the kids need or what my wife needs or all the stresses that are constantly there. I just give myself the day to, to do my own thing and make a painting. And after that day, I felt so calm and balanced and uh -huh. like filled, right? And I, uh -huh. it, I guess it, it, um, it made me realize that that um it's something that i need just to maintain equilibrium you know something that i need to to be sane and what i realized too is that i i think that that's what this quote is all about is like the pain i i realized that that there was a tax there was there was you know uh there was something that i wasn't getting that i needed um there was a pain yeah there, i mean there's pain from not working and that finally got to a point where I just um, had to do it. So That's the pain, very well said. That's, and I, yeah. I, I also see Keep this. Going. I guess I'm, I'm going to be talking too much. But the my uh, my no. wife Laura, 
has is also an artist and that's her background that's her training and and uh she has not made a work consistently for years you know since before our kids were born huh. and um and then last year she did this project where she did a collaboration and ended up making a book of writings and collages with her sister and she loved it and in I could see that it did the same thing for her that it did for me that one day yeah. and filled her and made her feel more connected and you know like she was able to express herself in that way um and then just recently she has been talking more just about uh making time to to make art so I think uh for us both of us you know the pain of of working so the, part of the quote is like is this idea that um, the artists don't get down to work until the pain of working. So there is pain in working is exceeded by the pain of not working. The pain of working for for me and Laura, for Laura and I, for me and Laura, uh, for me and Laura is uh, is the stress. Laura and I is Laura and I. The stress of working is for it's Laura. I. It's Laura. It's Laura and I. Laura and I. <laughs> I Are you sure it's not Laura and me? <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Because it would be the it would be the stress of working for me, not the stress of working for I. Anyway, Laura and I, Laura, Laura and I. myself, Laura and myself. Okay, Laura and myself. Um, so the str- the 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 pain of working for us at this at this moment in our lives is the sacrifices that we have to make in getting child care in um not is the opportunity cost of not getting like just downtime to relax and uh recover from yeah. being full-time parents and the stress caused by taking time doing stuff that's not making money you know and i feel this pressure of yeah. you know to provide for my family so there is pain in actually working um because of all the the things that i'm not doing when i when i'm you know, doing my work, but, uh, both her and I have reached a point, I think in this past year where, where that pain of not, not doing our work, not, not creating, um, has start, we've started to see it exceeding the pain that's caused by actually making the sacrifices we need to, to do the work. Exactly. And let's just make it so you're, you two are a parent parents to three children under the age of five yes three daughters under the age of five and it's, <laughs> and it's crazy i personally don't have i don't have children but i have two dogs <laughs> and honestly that <clears throat> that in its own funny way is very consuming like it affects I can't really go travel, and if I travel, I have to pay for two dogs being sit cared for, and right. it's a funny, you know, it's just it's not this remotely the same. But I, I don't even mean to drive any reference, any comparison to that. But well, you have the to feeling take care of, like, for example, if I roll if if I roll something out on the floor and I get into a project, and then they hear me and or smell me, and they're in their the room or crated. And they start crying, like, you guys, seriously, I'm just rolled this all out. I'm getting all set up. <laughs> Give me an hour to just... Yeah, no. And if they come out, there's a chance they're going to mark the thing and pee on it. Yep. Step and there's in nowhere wet to really... paint. Yeah. And so that thing about, like, you get it all set up to work, and then you're like, seriously, this is... So I empathize with the situation, both the two of you, and for Laura being a full-time mom and then having that, like it, she gets supplies out and the kids are awake. They're like, I'm sure they want to play with it. And she's like, Oh my gosh. Right. That's. But I think uh, regardless for both of us of, uh, you know, the responsibilities of uh, over living beings, you know, whether it be a dog or a child, uh, like we've mm-hmm. both had just uh, this past year or, or two or more, has has just been tremendously stressful just to just to maintain life you know like our own mm-hmm. like you've had 
stuff going on in your personal life and and finding a place that you feel is home and and uh and not having my stuff <laughs> not have, yeah you got Just your stuff in in uh, across the other side of the Oregon. country and yeah and also the i think the interesting another question i have about this is that when you sit down to work i was thinking about this before our conversation today was there's so many, if we were, again, we kind of talked about social media last week. There's so many things you could so go, well, if I'm going to work, I'm going to work on, like for you, we're working on the, your website, or I should follow up with these people, or I, I, I'm not very good at juggling and sort of doing, having multiple balls in the air. And people say, you should be doing another workshop or maybe like why aren't you promoting the commissions or what about the licensing and right right sometimes when you sit down to work you're like i don't freaking know it can kind of par paralyze you a little bit with oh for sure i think that's i think that's <sighs> That's the issue here. When I when I saw this uh, work, uh, like I mean this this quote of uh, of the pain of working, uh, that pain isn't like I love working. I lo when I get into the into painting, yeah. I'm I'm happy, right? That that's a very fulfilling activity for me. But the pain of that work is what I'm not doing, and like the psychological uh, gravity or the the stress that I feel. Um, because of all the things that I'm I'm choosing not to do, or, or that the the perceived responsibilities are things that I ought to yes. be doing that I you know that I'm passing or cutting out, and I think that's that's kind of the the times we're living in. I think I couldn't have said it better. Like the whole social media thing is is this huge psychological load, you know? Like there's this there's this feeling that we need to get our work out there and we need to be active and uploading pictures and comments and uh, creating a community and like that's a full-time job just by itself yeah and it's tricky just allowing you giving yourself the permission to pick and choose the parts of that the parts of social media that you feel like you can handle that feel like a, a good fit for your personality or choosing just to disregard it and decide that it's just not for you. Right. And those are hard decisions to make. Yeah. Not feeling guilt about Yeah, guilt. Ugh, I, guilt. Oh, I hate the guilt stuff. I, hate the I, guilt. I think that's, that's been the biggest detrimental aspect. I think of social media and the working I think that's why I really loved making books because I let it goes back to in school I studied graphic design and photography and I I like a project I like being given a, a something that's it wasn't about one page of a book it was the whole thing it was loose because it was and I could sort of structure out the and I knew what I was doing. Oh my gosh. I knew what I was like. I knew the bigger project and I could just, it's a, uh, it's probably similar to like working on a film or something like it's a bigger thing than just one specific, the self-consciousness that's attached to one piece. Right. And there's um, a, and there's, there is a way to finish it. Whereas it feels like a lot of what yes. we do, there's no end, you know, there's no stopping point. There's no milestones. It's just this continuing monster, you know, that the, the, <laughs> feels like a monster. <laughs> Thumbs up, everyone listening. Go forth and be an artist. Yes. High five. You know what I was thinking uh, as I've been getting more and more depressed, the more we talk about this quote. <laughs> is that that uh perhaps uh, some of our prompts ought to be uh not quotes uh but maybe more uh like the prompts that you give some of your workshops you know just memories um favorite art materials 
you know, just like prompts that get us talking about stuff that aren't necessarily quotes. What do you think about that? We could divide it in half because I think this is, I think people listening to this, I, I feel that there's other people that feel this way too. Oh, for sure. Um, I just think it's got to, is, is it going to be, it, it just feel like it's so heavy last weekend, this week was, I know. <laughs> I know. maybe that's just like inevitable because that's where we're at right now. It's just things. It's, a, he- it's a heavy time. I think it's a lot of people are just, so I haven't looked at one of my books, this book, Messy Thrilling Life. I haven't had a copy of it for about five years. No, three years. But a friend lent me her co- her copy of my book. Awesome. But I opened the I opened the introduction that just resonated with me when we were talking just now. Um, so I'm going to probably bumble through it. But let me take a drink of water. Hold on. So this is from Messy Thrilling Life, The Art of Figuring Out How to Live. Remember building the best fort ever, and then how the dog charged through the living room and across the pillows, and how the blankets slid out from under the stack of books holding it down, and how the whole thing fell apart, but also how this broken down mess was what you got you outside, out to that wide field where you found some jacked up old wood and a random shoe and then how you found yourself starting again building something altogether new how you sat there with dirt under your fingernails digging away and how the sun was setting and you looked up to see a new view emerging from across the wide field and over the lake a world that was waiting for you but which you wouldn't have seen if the dog hadn't charged through the living room That's how these pages are made. They are bits and beginnings, little forts I set up in my studio and in my dreams. They're the beginnings of conversations to be continued. They are notes to myself, all the things I want to remember. A winter night spent dancing on my rooftop, feeling my life was complete as is. I was right where I was meant to be in the world. This book captures the way I carried these moments that made up my life, the way my questions look to me and the way I find what is true for my life. This book is not a straight line with all the perfect pieces filled in just right. This is a document of how we can trapeze about wondering how we can devise plans and theories on how to make life feel better, more safe and right, more beautiful, and how all the while our life, this big, messy, thrilling life is waiting for us to step into, to dance, to, to write about and to live. This is a book about doing just that. Mm. June two, June tenth, two thousand four. Eleven years ago. Eleven years ago. But that, I think. I can I say something about that that quote yes I I kind of fixated on that first part about the fort and when yeah the dog runs through the fort and destroys it you know or yeah metaphorically speaking when the stresses of life or a relationship or something runs through uh your precious creation you know or something that you feel like you're trying to to make um there's there's a pain involved in that loss, right? You know, when that thing is destroyed, that pain can, can become a barrier to then wanting to rebuild or to start over again. Right. Cause you just remember, or you're afraid of losing it again, or you're, you're afraid of hurting that way again when it's, uh, when it's dashed, you know, or, or destroyed. And I think for me, uh, I th- there was a moment when I felt like my aspirations to uh, you know show work in a gallery or be be a you know a real a real boy a real artist um, I feel like they were kind of t- 
torn apart just by re the realities of, you know, it's hard to make a living being an artist. And so I yeah. kind of packed up that, that idea of being an artist um, because I didn't feel like it was a reality for me and I couldn't bear to hope that, that I could actually do it, you know? Anyway, and I, f I feel like that pain, you know, that pain of uh, not being able to kind of meet that expectation that I had had for so long or that dream kept me from just um, doing what I could, you know, and, and making what I what was there for me to make, you know, or what, what was possible for me to make. Anyway, I think, I think yeah. a lot of us have that pain, you know, of, uh, I think, you know, when you go into another person's studio or when you find artwork that speaks to you and you feel that little bit of pain of like, well, I want, I have, I have something that I, that I want to say or that I want to make. Or I remember when I was, I get this all the time. Like when I was in high school, I was actually really good at art, you know, or something like that. And I think people have that, that pain of loss. Like I used to really enjoy doing this and I used to really have dreams that I could, mm. um, you know, make artwork that was meaningful and, and beautiful to other people, you know, that other people would want. And, uh, I think, you know, that kind of points to our own, uh, you know, sense of loss or sense of, uh, you know, what we don't, anyway, I'm kind of rambling. I'm trying to find the, well, the thought. Well, I think that interesting, uh, the, the, the plowing through the living room, you know, it's like, wow, wow, this, okay, this, okay, life just... Like, I feel that with my parents' divorce. You just suddenly this huge light. This was written before that. I'm like, <laughs> looking back, this is going, things were fine in 2004. Yeah. You're right. It was fine. And then you think, you know, um, that's an example in my, in my life that just, and I didn't <clears throat> publicly kind of know how to address that in my work. And people are like, you'll always find, you'll find a way to, you know, even both my mom and dad said, you'll find a way to process this through your work. I'm like, ah, dude, I don't know. Yeah. But that. Well, there's a there right there. That's a different kind of pain associated with making artwork that I think is very real for a lot of people. And that is that uh, for a lot of people, creating artwork is a way of processing and pre a way of trying to get understand what what they're experiencing and in that case if you were to make artwork that was trying to process uh the you know the divorce that would be mm -hmm. facing some really difficult challenging hard feelings right and that's its right. own kind of that's its own kind of pain and like i can see how it would be overwhelming or that you wouldn't want to invite that into your creative space yeah like, I don't even want to deal with that. Yeah, it's that feeling like you just want to have a bit of solid ground before you go into the next phase. Yeah. I, I think it's important for us to realize that there is pain both in making and creating and doing whatever it is that we feel compelled to do, whether it's a painting or a photograph or a book or a collage or whatever. There are different types of pain associated in that activity. Some of them are pain huh. caused by uh, what we're choosing to give up, what to sacrifice to be able to do that. And some huh. of them are a result of the actual process of making, you know, like we just talked about working through difficult feelings. But there is also a corresponding pain. I think I just really like that that word was used. I don't think it's, I think the quote falls apart in certain situations, but there's also a pain in, involved in not doing your work. There's a pain that there, there are things that you're giving up and sacrificing by not making time to do your work. And I think this idea that, you know, we won't go get in the studio and actually make our work until the, the friction or the, the hurt, the pain caused by not doing it is, is greater than uh, the different kinds of pain that are associated with actually doing it. And I think that that realization, you know, that, um, that there are these two kind of sides of that coin that both, both situations create friction, create pain, create, uh, you know, 
I don't know, different kinds of losses is... And the physicality of it, it sort of reminds me of, like, saying, like, until you start exercising, you won't know how good it feels. You just have to get exercising, yep. and you'll feel the endorphins yep. move. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would encourage myself and everybody out there, face that pain. You and are, how would you tell... Sorry, the tra- there's a train going by. Yeah, that's How a would you tell thing. people that to... Just, I know. I love it. How would you tell people, I'm thinking of that feeling of, so you don't get too frustrated with, say, you roll the paper and then the dogs are all over it or the kids are all into your supplies. How I don't can know. you do well, I don't. I don't know because it's, for me at least, the pain of not making work was, wasn't apparent to me. You know, I, what, I didn't really yeah. realize what I was giving up, you know, the the what I needed from making art I didn't realize you know what I was give, what I didn't have so I guess I would I would say that you just need to go on faith that you need to do your work it's not just something that you do because it's fun or it's a creative outlet or whatever reasons you give yourself for why you're a creative person it's something that you need to be who you need to be right to feel fulfilled to to fulfill your potential I think and that there will always be pain associated with um, you know there will always be sacrifices you have to make to do your work and it's worth it I think that's what I would say is just to realize and to have faith that making those sacrifices necessary to for you to be able to do your work is worth it and it doesn't have to be doesn't have to have the answer it doesn't have to be the answer it's just part of life i mean it doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to look perfect it's the getting your hands into it yeah i think you just got to do it i think there's a fiction in a lot of our minds that you know you need to know what you're doing before you start but the opposite is true you know you need to start so you can know what you're doing Thanks for joining us. Uh, Come back next week for a lot more laughing. Sabrina and I have a bunch of ideas for this podcast and for the website. We would like it to be much more than just an audio podcast. We'd like to find ways to give you excuses and reasons and an appetite for getting your hands dirty and making stuff. If you're interested in seeing where this goes, again, I would ask that you consider supporting us at patreon.com backslash room and by sharing this podcast with your friends. The website is roominthetrees.com where you can find show notes and much more. We are on Facebook. Music for this episode was provided by my brother Brent, who is fantastic. And you should check out his music on SoundCloud. His username is Venters Stag Motel. Come back next week for episode three. Sounds woo.